Good evening. Um, welcome back after the holidays. Today, we're going to start with a new topic, new chapter about analog to digital conversion. This is chapter 12 in our book. I uploaded the slides to e-learning. And we're going to start the topic. I'm going to assume that some of you have experienced this topic before, but feel free. I'm going to go a little lower level, but feel free to stop me and ask at any point of time about uh, this uh, topic before starting with the slides. Let's talk about how a computer, a microcontroller, interacts with the outside world up to the knowledge we have so, so, so far. So if we have an HCS12, how does an, a computer interact with something outside, a peripheral or a sensor or an actuator, right? Until this moment, what do we know? What do we, did we learn about? What are the interfaces? We learned about Parallel ports, right? Parallel ports. And we also said that parallel ports, sometimes we refer to them uh, to as digital ports, right? Because we can configure a, a, a port pin as an input or as an output to be able to output a zero or one, or recognize a zero or one on the pin, right? Coming from a high zero representing ground and one representing PCC, right? High. So in order for a microcontroller unit in general, to be able to recognize the voltage on a pin, just like this one, if it was high or low, to be able to understand if a button is pressed or no, it configures, or you configure, the software engineer configures the pin as input, it will find a zero or one in some data register, right? To, be, to know that the pin is pulled to ground or pulled to high. Right. This is being able to understand digital quantities, zero or one, button pressed or open, uh, or not pressed, sorry, door open or closed. Turn on a motor or turn it off. Well, we know the concept of, we talked about PWM, but it is zero or one, right? But with different amount of times for uh, how long a zero is going to stay or a one going to stay. So the only thing we know so far is how to input or output zeros and ones. But in the world, the world is not only zeros and ones, right? In your life, you want to know your, your microcontroller that is controlling your air condition needs to know the temperature, right? So Temperature is not a digital value. It is analog, right? It is non-electric signal, Aslan, right? Temperature is non-electric. And it is analog. Pressure, non-electric. And analog. Um, what else? Um, uh, Light intensity, right? Analog, non humidity. humidity. Um, anything you can think of. Uh, Height or altitude. Yeah, or, uh, altitude, uh, distance, um, emissions, etc. Right? These are non-electric things that we need to know. And the computers, and we are, the computer are there 
to be able to understand these things and take decisions based on commands that they take from a user, right? So to control temperature, to control pressure or read pressure to be able to understand, do I have to, how, uh, my height, if it's a pressure sensor used in an airplane, right? The light, to control the lights on or off. Humidity, to control if I need to uh, water my, my uh, for ag in, uh, agriculture, right? Um, uh, any, any kind of sensor, you need to understand it, to take a decision, to do something, right? So the controller, the microcontroller needs to be able to understand these non-electric um, values that are also non-digital. While we know that a microcontroller or a computer only deals with digital numbers. So to be able to deal with these things, we need first to convert them to electric signals, to electric signals or quantities or voltage, right? And when we talked about zero and one, we said zero is zero volt, one is VCC, either in input or output mode. So we need to be able to convert any of these physical quantities into an electric voltage value. First thing, this is step number one. How do we do this? How? Through something we call, we all know in our life, sensors. Transducers. Okay, a temperature sensor is a type of material and device which is made of some material that is able to change its a value in it, resistance for example, based on the temperature around it, change resistance, put it in a circuit, you get changed voltage within a light sensor, works like that. It's about the material or so sensors, mainly it's, it's how they make a, a temperature sensor, a pressure sensor, um, a humidity sensor. A lot of sensors depend on materials, semiconductors, lower level, okay? As for as electric engineers, at this point in, in, in embedded system design, we use these sensors, we're users of these sensors, but we need to understand how they operate. So most transducers, transducers or sensors, convert this physical quantity into an electric voltage value, which is also analog. So if we talk about a temperature sensor, a temperature sensor, we have a temperature sensor on our SCS well board. We're gonna use it probably. We have a light sensor, we have a potentiometer, whatever. A temperature sensor would give you a voltage value, methylene, between five volts and zero volts, either linear or nonlinear, corresponding to a temperature maybe from minus 20 Celsius to up to 120 Celsius, yeah. okay? The data sheet will tell you, zero, if you read v zero volt, or oh, minus 20 volts is gonna be transformed in this, into this value, 120 into this value. It will give you a formula, a formula, how temperature is gonna correspond to a voltage value. And we see these in, 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 uh, in data sheets. Same for humidity sensor, for, same for pressure sensor, etc. Okay, so we'll get a value, a voltage value that we can plug into a formula and get the temperature. Right. But because this voltage is analog, 
my microcontroller can understand it. My microcontroller is going to be able to recognize five volts, right? If I use the parallel ports, the digital ports, it's going to be able to recognize five volts or, or ground or zero volts, right? Which is either minus 20 or 120. Like, what if the temperature was 30 Celsius? What is the voltage going to be? Okay, too easy in it. If zero is zero, five is 100. طيب, 50 Celsius is going to be 2.5 volt. طيب, how am I going to recognize 2.5 volt? I only know zero, one, right? So we need to be able to convert the voltage range from zero to five volt, which is ground to VCC into into a digital number that is represented if I use one bit to represent it, it will be zero for zero and one for five volt. Now I'm gonna start talking about voltages, okay? How we got the voltage from temperature or from humidity or from whatever, it doesn't matter that the transducer will give me this value, okay? Now I need to be able to convert a voltage into a digital number. Right now we know how to convert a voltage into a one bit digital number, zero or one through parallel port. What if I, what if I was able to represent the voltage in two bits? Then in this case, I'll be able to have a zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So instead of recognizing 100 Celsius and zero Celsius in the one bit case, I'll be able to recognize zero Celsius, 25 Celsius, um, 50 Celsius, or, or you know, uh, uh 33 and 66. Huh? 33 Celsius and 66 Celsius. Okay, <laughs> and it divide by four. Yes, the 100 divided by four. Zero, uh, 30 something, 60 something, and 100 maybe. Okay, but what if I get three bits to represent my, my voltage? Then I'll, I'll be able to represent how many values? to eight. the three, eight values. Then I'll be able to eight, be able to represent eight voltage values. Four bits, so more resolution, right? Here, the difference was about 30 Celsius difference, right? The voltage here was, was uh, here was 100 Celsius difference. With one extra bit, the voltage difference, I'm dividing by eight, right? What, one extra bit, I'll divide. What if I get to eight bits? If I get to represent zero volt up to five volts or 5,000 millivolts in eight bit, zero will be zero, I'm gonna write because eight is long, right? I'm write it. I'm gonna write it in hex. Zero x zero zero, and five thousand millivolts or five volts. The VCC will be zero x f f, right? In decimal, this is zero and this is two fifty five. Then I I I I have two fifty five steps. Resolution, each step represents how much? 5,000 millivolts divided by 256 values, something around 19.5 millivolts. This could correspond to maybe 0.5 Celsius. What if I get 
to be to represent my readings in terms of 10 bit well the zero in this case will be the zero celsius will be represented by zero x um, three f f and the hundred celsius will be represented uh, uh, sorry this is zero 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 and this is this would be zero x eight ones uh, or ten ones three f f in decimal zero to one thousand twenty three right yani dividing the voltage the five thousand millivolts zero volt to five thousand millivolt to one thousand twenty three steps right so the resolution here in terms of voltages is sorry will be dividing the five five thousand millivolts into a hundred uh, 1023 readings something around 4.88 millivolts compared to the 8-bit we were at 19 millivolt, 19.5 millivolt, that represents maybe 0.5 Celsius, then this would represent 0.05 Celsius, maybe, any, it depends on the data sheet. Uh, so more bits to be able to represent voltage will give you better resolution, more accurate readings. So what, so we said, we have a physical value Temperature, for example. We have a transducer. Uh, sensor. In this case, the temperature sensor. That will convert it to voltage. Then we should have something to convert this analog voltage into a digital value. Or number. And this would be the analog to digital converter. OK, is that clear where we are standing today? Today, we're going to be here, able to read a voltage applied to our one of our pins on the microcontroller converted into a digital value. And then this digital value interpreted according to the formula of this transducer into a digital representation of the, of the temperature, a digital representation of the distance, a digital representation of, of anything you're measuring for your controller or computer to be able to use in its computation and making the decision. So when we talk about A to D converters, analog to digital converters, we ask about what makes an, one A to D better than another A to D. First, how fast is this? How fast how about its speed in convert in, in, uh, how fast to convert? Um, second, its resolution. How accurate it is. Okay. These are the basics of A to D. I'm not talking about, so we have A to D, analog to digital conversion. Sometimes they refer to it as ADC, analog to digital converter. Sometimes they write it A to D, whatever. 
This is what we're gonna talk, be talking about. In A to D, you want to be able to, this is the microcontroller unit, to recognize a voltage analog voltage coming from a sensor maybe, okay? Or a direct voltage, whatever, applied into an input pin. We call it, if I don't say an input, a digital, analog digital conversion pin or whatever, we say an analog pin or analog port versus digital ports or digital pins that we uh, used to use in the parallel ports. I want to be able to recognize that if I'm using a, uh, a, an 8-bit A to D, an 8-bit A to D gives me 2 to the 8 values, right? Which is 256 values or readings, which is a number from 0 to 255, right? So. If I have a voltage over here connected of five volts, I want to be able to read in some register here, a data register, a value of 255 or eight ones. If I have a value, a zero, uh, a zero voltage, then the value I have to read is eight zeros. If the value I have here is 2.5 volts, then the reading I have here is 128, right? One zero 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 seven zeros. Like yeah. the whole range represented in eight bit. So when we talk about A to D, we're talking about input. Like yeah. we want to be able to read, read or recognize the voltage applied to our pin and convert it into a digital number saved in one of our registers. I am not talking, I am not talking about outputting an analog uh, voltage value. Okay, I'm not talking about this. Any output, the right, Using parallel ports, we can output a zero or one, right? Right. Our microcontroller, the thing that converts outputs, converts a digital number into an analog voltage on a pin is called a digital to analog converter. Digital to analog converter. Digital to analog converter. Our microcontroller does not have a digital to analog converter, but are, there are ways, because there's a reason why we don't have a digital to analog converter, because there are ways to, to, to produce analog voltage. One easy way is to use a zero one, a PWM approach to charge or discharge an RC circuit, a capacitor, right? And create how fast you charge this charge and, and use that to, to create analog voltage, to take it from the capacitor. There is analog, an, an, a, you, an, another approach using the R to R ladder, the resistor ladder, ladder, uh, a simple circuit. I, I, I just wanted to show it to you. I, I, I did a, uh, a, a simple Google search, something like this, using, use some resistors. And then this is a four bit to analog. Connect, connect your, your most significant bit to this pin, the one bit number three, bit number two, the bit number one, bit number zero. If you write all zeros, your voltage is zero. If you write a one, zero, 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 you get a voltage, right? Uh, if, 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 if you write a one, one, zero, zero, writing a one here, oh, sorry, I'm not writing. Writing a one means you're connecting this to five volts, right? So voltage divider, you, you can understand how or compute the, the voltage over here. If you write a five here and a five here and ground here and ground here, then this is a one, one, you get a higher value, right? So it is easy to build and if you want more bits, just add more resistors in this manner, just like a, a ladder, okay? This is called an 
a digital to analog converter. If you don't want to build it, there are chips. You can just bring them time to your parallel port, write your digital number, you get an analog voltage um, value. So this is not, this is out of our scope right now. What we're talking about is the A to D input, not output. Any questions so far? Should I stay at this pace or faster or slower? No, that's all good, doctor. Good, okay. So th this summarizes what we talked about, right? In the world, the quantities are non-electric. Uh, they're analog in nature. You need something called a transducer to convert these values into a voltage, then, okay, and the voltage then can be converted into digital value. So, but the voltage that you get from the sensor, maybe sometimes optional, you need to scale it. If the voltage is negative, for example, or the voltage is from zero to 0.5 volt, you may want to amplify it maybe, put it, uh, pass it through an amplifier uh, uh, to, to get to reach the zero to two volts method or zero to five volts. So the larger value, okay, the, the, the value that the, our A to D can understand, it has the, our value, we're gonna look deeper into A to D. Sometimes we need to do some signal conditioning, okay? The value that we get from the sensor could be a small value, could be, part of it could be negative. It could be noisy, we, need, we, we may need, to filter out noise before starting to read, okay? Any, um, so I've, I've gone through some applications where I was, I had to read a one or two millivolt uh, uh, value from a sensor where noise air in, 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 the, in, in, in the surroundings more than it sometimes. So you need to, uh, to pass it through signal conditioning amplifiers, uh, shifters, um, filters, whatever. Then an analog digital converter produces a digital value that our computer will use, our controller and disk value in this case will use. And this expresses that the voltage that we get is analog. So to represent it in a digital code, if we want to represent every single point on here, we need infinite number of bits, right? Infinite number of bits to represent. So we cannot do this. We need to quantize, right? Sample, sample, take a sample every amount of time and keep that sample until you get another sample. Keep that sample until you get another sample, then sample, right? We call this thing sample, hold it, sample, hold it, sample, hold it, sample and hold, right? So you take a sample at this point of time, you hold it until the next point of time, you get a sample, you hold it until the next point of time, you hold it and so on. Sample and hold, okay? Now, th there would be an error, of course, because you did not, you did not take all the values because it's an error. We call this error, okay? the quantization error. So at this point of time, at this point of time, the voltage was not the same as at this point of time, right? At this, in reality, this, this, at this point of time, it was larger than when we were here, right? But the, the, uh, the, the digital value we have is the same for both. So th th there's an error here, right? We call it the, uh, the quantization error. The more samples you take, the more accuracy you get, right? The more accuracy you get. The values you'll be able to represent for a voltage from zero to VDD or VCC is depends on the number of bits you're gonna use, okay? So the, the number of codes over here if I'm gonna use 8-bit, if n equals 8-bit, then I'm, then I'm gonna be able to represent, the, the codes will be zero to up to 
2 to the 8 minus 1, yani 255, right? 2 to the 8 is 256 minus 1, 255. So you'll get 0, 1, 2, 3, right? Up to 255. Meaning that you represented the voltage from 0 volt to VDD using 255 steps. What if, what if I used 10 bit? I'll be able to represent it using a code from zero to 1023, really two to the 10 minus one. Then I'll have 1023 codes representing the same voltage range, which means, which means smaller voltages voltage range is representing, represented by a code, right? How do A to D converters work? There are many algorithms. I'm not gonna go deep here. There, there is something called a flash parallel A to D converter that has two to the N comparators. It, it takes all the possible values of possible voltages. Uh, every, you compare five volts uh, to the reading. False. Uh, for uh, the other uh, one thousand, if n is one thousand twenty-three, you get all the values of the one thousand twenty-three voltage uh, representations. Convert them to analog voltage using a D to A and compare. A very costly, but it is very fast. Okay. Another approach uh, we can read about them: sigma delta A to D. What matters here? What I care about here is this approach that our microcontroller, the SCS-12, uses. The SCS-12 uses the successive approximation method. Successive, I'm gonna explain it right now shortly. How does the SCS-12 convert from an analog voltage to a digital number? It uses an approach called successive approximation. A method, something close to linear search, it takes a series of steps trying to get to the most accurate value. Okay, so this approach is not the fastest, but it is still in, in terms of our applications, it is acceptable. And we're gonna look and see numbers later. So in the successive approximation method, should I try to type? You have this analog voltage coming in from the sensor. Your, con your analog to digital converter that is part of a peripheral part of microcontroller is connected to a voltage reference high. And it could be the, the, v the VDD or VCC, the five volts, and the ground, maybe. We can change them. And I'm, I'm supposed to get a digital reading over here out of eight bits or 10 bits, okay, digital reading. So how the, uh, the successive approximation method works, there is some control logic here that, uh, that sets the value of a register called successive approximation register, SAR. This SAR, I'm gonna try to implement it here. Let's, let's say we're talking about 8 bit, 8 bit version. The SAR register will be 8 bit. 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 bit. So, what the converter does is that we have the analog, vo uh, analog voltage coming in. So, we have, Methylan, let's say uh, 2.5 volts. This in 8 bit, 2.5 volts should correspond to what? 1. 28, right? Because zero will correspond to zero and uh, five volts will correspond to 255, right? So the, in the middle, the 2.5 will be 127 or 128, 127. So, what, so we know the voltage over here. The microcontroller, or the successive approximation 
A to D converter goes to the most significant bit, most significant bit. And this is the least significant bit, bit number seven. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And sets this bit, it makes this bit a one, okay? So here you get a one, zero, 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 which is 100, 128, right? Well, maybe I, I, I uh, maybe I gave a bad example. Let's say the voltage here is is I don't know uh, one volt, whatever. Okay, one zero zero zero. Take it to a digital to analog converter. A digital to analog converter, something to the R to R resistor ladder converter I just showed you. Digital to analog. It will take this digital number. Convert it to an analog voltage. The analog voltage in this case is going to be 2.5 volts. And the comparator will check and send its signal to the control logic. Is one volt greater than or equal, uh, greater than one, 2. volt or less? Based on that, the value is kept or removed. If my reading here is larger than uh, the, the actual reading that coming from the sensor is larger than what I predicted, then this should go back to zero. If this was three volt, it is larger, then I should keep this as at one. But in this case, it is less, it is one volt. This goes back to zero. Then it sets, goes to bit number six, sets a one here. Okay, now the number is, is, is smaller, right? When it passes to, through a digital to analog converter, it will give a smaller voltage value, right? Let's say, I don't know, half of this, uh, 1.25 volts. Is one greater or less than 1.25? Oh, it's still less than it. That, so this should not be a one. It, it goes becomes a zero. Then it goes to bit number five, make it a one. Pass it through the D to A. What is the voltage we get here? Ah, uh, half of this, which is by two. Oh, so one is going to be greater than this. Then keep this one. Then let's go to the bit number four. Make it a one. And keep doing this until you get to an accurate value that a closest accurate value that is very close to that when you feed to the digital value converter will give you a voltage that is the closest to the actual voltage coming in. This is how the analog digital converter with successive approximation works. And this describes the, the, the method. So the successive approximation register from zero to, for if we're eight bit of zero to seven, or if we're 10 bit, zero to nine are initialized at zero. And you set a counter that if we're at eight bit, that counts seven times, right? Then you put a one in the most significant bit. Okay. Then you convert the voltage, the value in this the SAR register into a voltage through a digital to analog converter. Then you compare the volt, the converted voltage with the voltage coming in. If it is greater, the converter, then, uh, okay, this block is should be assignment, Yanni. SAR of I is, assign, is converted back to zero. If no, and we're not done with the counter yet, okay, you keep the one. You keep the one. And you go reduce I, go to the next bit. You make it a one. Compare it. If I am larger, you bring it back to zero or keep it at one if I'm not larger yet, okay? The, and what I'm explaining is what we need to understand for our own understanding. This is not something we're gonna implement. This is something that is already there, this A to D converter is already there in our SCS well controller. Okay, but this is how it works. 
And you, you can see that in a case of an 8-bit A to D, eight cycles have to go through, right? In case of a 10-bit 10, 10 A to D, 10 times, you need to do this 10 times. So more resolution will take more time. No question so far, huh? Great. As we saw that our digital to analog converter has a voltage reference low and high. That's why we call the A to D converter uh, ratio metric. The value that it gives you, methylene uh, zero or 255, the 255 doesn't represent the five volt. It represents the voltage reference high and the zero volt represent the voltage reference low. This could be five volts, could be three volts. This could be ground, could be one volt, okay? It's a voltage reference. So every A to D needs a voltage reference, high and low. And the value you get, if we're at eight bit, then the zero to 250, the 255 is the voltage reference high and zero is the voltage reference low. Usually these are the power source and ground of the controller, but you can use different values. If I'm using 10 bit, then we're talking about zero representing the voltage reference low and uh, 1,023 representing the voltage reference high. The 10 bit is 10 ones, right? 1,023. Okay, then. If, if by default, by default. Doctor, the question is small, yes. Yes, Mr. On the same slide, the reference low, reference high. Yes. Hello. I mean, in another sense, that the input voltage that I'm reading will not be higher than or less than this range. This range. Should be higher than this range. Yes, that's why you need a stable voltage in the middle called the stable voltage. 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 to rescale the voltage that you know that is gonna come from this sensor into your voltage range that your A to D understands, okay? So let's okay. say, let's say your, your, your voltage reference high is, is five volt and voltage reference low is zero volt. Then you're not gonna be able to recognize negative voltage. You're not gonna be able to recognize six volt. Six is gonna be the same as five for you in terms of converting to digital numbers. Both are gonna give you 255 if it was 8-bit. Um, if the range was less, what you get from the sensor is from zero to two volts and your reference is already five, you don't have a problem, but you're, you, you're losing resolution over here. You're not utilizing these steps over here, okay? I'll come to this. But the answer to your question, yes, you're not be, gonna be able to recognize anything out of this range if it was larger than the voltage references. And in this case, you'll need to apply signal conditioning to make it fit into the range. Yes, yes, exactly. This is what happened. Approximate is the, the successive approximation is the, what you saw right here. So you, you write a one, uh, you're larger, uh, then keep the one. You're smaller, then remove the one. صح? If you're larger, then you need to make this number become larger. So you keep the one and add another one. Uh, when I added this one, uh, it became too large. Bring it back to zero and go to the one that has less effect. Make it a one. Too large, make it a zero. Ah, this one. Okay, now I'm still less, but I'm closer. Go to the one after. This is successive approximation. You you move through these steps, eight steps or 10 steps to get closer and closer, approximate uh, successively until you get to the, the correct value. See? 
But at the end, did you reach the actual value? Yani every time you go through the next step, the next bit, you get closer to the value. But did you get to the very accurate value at the end? No, the, there could be an, uh, uh, an error. How big is this error? You call it the, the quantization error. How big is this error? The, the worst case scenario depends on the number of bits. So, yani, if our number of bits, if we're using an 8-bit A to D, right, then each bit, th then you, we're talking about 2 to the 8, 2 to the 8 codes, right? Yani, 0 to 255, representing 0 volt to 5,000 volt if this was the voltage reference low and this was the voltage reference high. Millivolt, it was. Millivolts, yes. Thank you. Uh, then the worst case scenario that this range is divided by 255, right? So 5,000 by 255. And this is, we said, about 19.5 volts. So the worst case scenario is this is the, this is going to be the error or a little bit that less than this. If we're talking about 10 bits, then we're dividing this by 1023 and we're talking about 4.8 volts, millivolts. Less error. And this error is the value of the worst case scenario we have here from this step. In this case, I was supposed to have this reading was supposed to be this voltage, but it's giving me something here. And this value is giving me the same reading and it could be this voltage. So the, the voltage difference between here and here, sorry, between this and this, this, this is the, the error. But in this case, it is uh, what we take here is, is take it, takes the ceiling. Yani if you read the voltage above zero here, we're 10 bit, out, uh, uh, let's say we're eight bit. Let's say we're, uh, we are eight bit. So we have from zero to 255, the values. So, and the, the, the step size, the step size is 5,000 if the voltage reference high is uh, five volts and the low is uh, zero volt divided by 255. And this is 19.5 millivolts. So assume you read a reading here that was three millivolts. What is the corresponding value gonna be a one? It's gonna be a, any. Uh, it's gonna be uh, rounded up. What if I read a 19.5 millivolt? It's gonna be also a one. Yani a 0.1 millivolt is gonna be a one. A 19.5 will be a one. What's gonna be the two? Anything about above 19, any nine, 20 millivolts will be a two. 20.2 will be a two, okay? So what is the error from, it is the error or the step, the step size minus point something is gonna be the error. What I was gonna say, yes, I was here. A clear Mustafa, did I address your question? Or yes, it's clear. Okay. 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 guys. So if I'm using an eight bit, a to D. An 8 bit A to D will represent the voltage reference low up to the voltage reference high. Let's say these are 0 volt to 5 volts or 5000 millivolts. I'm going to represent them using number codes from 0 to 255, right? In real life, in real life, this voltage is already, you have it, it's on 
applied on your microcontroller pin, right? Analog pin. And this is the value you're going to read that you're going to find in uh, your data register. Okay. So, so this is what I have, and this is what I want to know as a controller. Imagine you are a, a controller. You're going to go read a value in a register that is somewhere between 0 and 255. So if you write the 0, then you know what is the voltage outside? It is 0 volts. You read the 255. What's the voltage outside? Ah, oh, it's 5 volts. You read uh, 19. Uh, sorry, you read the 1. What's the voltage outside? 19.5 millivolts. You read uh, any voltage, X. What's the voltage outside? So the voltage outside uh, is the X, which is the reading you found in your register. Uh, Times what? The step size in our resolution. The step size, the voltage reference high minus voltage reference low, the 5,000. Over. Over. Mm. Over the, the number of steps, right? How many steps we have? Two, the more and and minus one, so minus one. 255. Over two to the n minus one. This is what we're doing right, right now. So the voltage outside is your X times, this is our 5,000 millivolt. over 255. This is the step size. Okay, so nothing to memorize. So the step size times the number of steps, which is the reading, is the voltage outside. And when you know the voltage outside, you know what is the temperature or humidity or whatever physical value, okay? This is the case when the voltage reference low and voltage reference high, the range, this range starts from zero. Doctor, if you have a question. Yes. When we work with sensors and so on, these things we are going to know and it will be known. Thank you, Yazid. What I explained until this point, everything is there, okay? Now, what I started right now, it's your responsibility. It's our responsibility. Yani, what I was explaining right now, right now, that you're gonna be able to read a value called reading in a, a in a, you know, let's say, Yazid, listen, we're gonna write code together. We're gonna say we're gonna write some code that will give us this thing. Okay, which means we're we're gonna get a number in some register that corresponds to a voltage applied to a pin. And my role is to be able to convert this reading into a voltage, understand what is the voltage applied outside. Then as a next step, using the data sheet, be able to translate this voltage into a physical value. So our work starts here, Yazid. Uh. All of what I explained before that, the successive approximation and the thing before is for you to understand, okay? Yeah. But the reading, if it's two, it's eight bit or 10 bit, this is something you decide. We configure, we configure if it's eight bit or 10 bit. Yeah. If the voltage reference high or low are five volts or zero volt, this is something we, we set, okay? And yeah. that, thus the step size is something we decide. The accuracy is something we decide. Okay. Sima. Don't worry about this right now. J just try to make sure you're uh, understanding everything I'm explaining. Sima. Sima. Okay. okay. Mesh. So this was the case when the voltage reference was zero to 
five. And yani here, uh, range, yani if we want to apply what we learned so far, zero. So uh, K is our reading. Huh? We just applied reading. So let's assume voltage reference low equals zero and voltage reference high equals five volts. What is the VK? VK here is the voltage outside that we want to figure out. What is it gonna be? Zero plus the range five volt minus zero. Five minus zero, five. So in terms of millivolts, five thousand millivolts times K is the reading divided by this part divided by two to the n. If we are if n is eight bit, two to the n minus one, two five, two, five. Two minus one, two fifty four. Right? This is what we just did. This is what we just did over here, right? This is what we just did. So, the doctor, the K is the analog reading, digital reading. Uh, uh, um, VK? The K value. The K is the digital reading in the the K, K is the digital, is digital. VK is the VK analog is... voltage outside, yes. Oh, okay, okay. VK is the analog voltage applied to the pin that we want to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So V is the analog and K is the digital one after yes. conversion. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's the reading, you find it in the register, in the analog register. Okay. So this formula applies if your v voltage reference low is one volt, مثلاً, instead of zero, then your range is five minus one is four. This will be one plus 4,000, huh? times the reading over 255 and so on. Okay, guys, some examples. Oh, if your reading was, uh, if your reading was 25, and your voltage reference high, and yeah, if your voltage reference low was one volt, you're using a 10 bit A to D. Your vo voltage reference high is four volt. Okay. Uh, uh, what are the, res the converging results? What is the voltage outside when you read a 25, an 80, a 240? Uh, uh, a 720, a 720. Hi, right. let's take this example. My voltage reference low is one volt. My reading is 720. I found it inside the register times the range, will be four minus three, uh, four minus uh, one, sorry, is three. This is the range over 1,023. Then the voltage outside is 3.11 volts and so on. So th these are just reminders. Sometimes guys, if your voltage that you get, any, let's assume that this is the microcontroller. And the voltage reference low and voltage reference high apply to the A to D inside are zero volts and five volts. And your analog pin is reading, is sensing a voltage coming from a sensor Oops, a sensor. Uh, something that is always from zero to one volts, representing a temperature from zero Celsius to 100 Celsius. Uh, if you read it as is a zero to one, then you're losing a lot of resolution. You're only using the steps from zero to one volt that are, if I'm using a 10 bit A to D, if I'm using a 10 bit A to D, then you're using uh, 1023, uh, uh, well, uh, we know the step is uh, 4.88 millivolts times 
uh, 1 over 5, right? Yani the range is 0 to 1. I'm using 1 fifth of the range. Yani from 0 to this. So you're using how many steps? 4.8, uh, yani 1,023, right? You're using one fifth of them steps. So you're gonna still, if if the zero to one represent the zero Celsius to hundred Celsius, you're gonna still your step size is gonna be yet four point eight eight millivolts. But if you take this voltage, you amplify it to make the range instead of zero to one, make it zero to five, then you increase your resolution, there, your, your accuracy by five because the 4.88 millivolts are not gonna step, uh, uh, represent uh, five Celsius, they're gonna start representing methylene one Celsius, you, you, you will have more number of steps representing the same temperature range. Okay. So sometimes you need to scale your circuit and this is the step we have over here. The that we call signal conditioning. So, a signal conditioning circuit could be a scaling circuit that could uh, amplify a small signal. And we're, we're familiar with the 741 op amp, right? And uh, how it for works, the amplification would be this. So you, you, you get the sensor value, you put it here, you get the output value, you send it to the A to D. Another circuit using 741s. The, this, this would shift. If you get a negative voltage method, you can apply, you can shift it by adding voltage here, apply negative voltage to here. Negative times negative is positive. So you can shift it this amount and amplify it with this amount by setting these register resistor values, right? So a shift and amplify circuit. Just reminding you of electronics, some examples on that. Now we're done with the basics for the foundry. And we're gonna start with the actual CS12 converter and it is its registers and how it works and how we can configure it. Do you want me to take your break time or you wanna finish here? Overwhelming or not yet? Or... It's fine, you can continue. Okay. Okay. So the SCS12 microcontroller. So we explained all the, you know, the, the meat, the, the, the things we need to know. Now I'm, I'm gonna give you facts, what's there. The, SOS, the SCS12 microcontroller has two, the one that we're using, two eight channel 10 bit A to D converters, two. Yani, eight channel 10 bit A to D converters. What, what does this mean? The SC as well has eight channel, yani one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. analog to digital converter zero. We call it PAD zero. And another eight channel, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Another eight channel, we call it ADC one or PAD one. 
This one is controlled by an A to D, zero. And these are all somehow connected to this A to D. And this one has another A to D, one. So how many A to Ds do we have? Two A to Ds, right? But, 8 bit each. Oh, or not 8 bit each. Each of the eight uh, of the eight of these has eight channels. Eight channels that can pass voltage to the A to D. Not in parallel. The, you cannot be able to read at a a single point of time, the voltage here and the voltage here. But there is a way to switch between them real fast. If you want to read a voltage at a single moment of time with no, with zero microsecond between them, you will have to connect them to two separate A to Ds. But if you have a few micro or a few milliseconds, you can tie them to two different channels on the same A to D. It is fast enough to convert the voltage there or on a pin on a channel and another voltage on another channel using the same hardware. This is the meaning of channels. So we have two A to Ds. Each A to D is connected to eight pins, eight channels, okay? The A to D, each one of them is able to produce a number of 10 bits or eight bits. So the reading here on any channel, on any of the A to Ds, the voltage can be represented in 10 bits or eight bits. That is the meaning. Okay. Okay. Yes. For each A to D, so, but we have two A yes. to Ds. Yes. How many sensors can we connect to our controller in this case? Two A to Ds, everyone is eight channel. 16. 16, yes. Okay, but give 10, 10, uh, 10, uh... 10 bits. Yes, give 10 bits. I connected the voltage to one of the channels. One of the channels. Channel 1 on A to D, 0. This would be, if the voltage it was 5 volt, مثلاً, here, this would be 1, 1, 1, 1. 11111 one, 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 one. Ilya 1023. Okay, versus if it was 8 bit, we can configure it 8 bit or 10 bit. 0 to 255 is the voltage from voltage reference low to voltage reference high. Gonna be from 0 to 255, then this is 8 bits. Huh? If it was 10 bit, then I'm going to be able to represent the voltage reference low from 0 to 1,023. The 1,023 is the 2 to the 10 minus 1. This is the meaning of 10-bit uh, uh, A to D converter. So Mustafa, if somebody asks you, what is more accurate, a 10-bit A to D or a 12-bit A to D or an 8-bit A to D? A 12. A 12, yes, because you, div you, you will be able to represent your voltage range using two to the 12 values. So smaller voltage range will have, you will have smaller voltage range per code, per number, okay? This is the meaning of 10 bit or eight bit. But doctor, more accurate, but on the speed or the bandwidth. In successive approximation, more bits representing a voltage means more time doing the successive approximation. Yes. If we're using, this is if, you're, if we're using successive approximation, if we're using a flash converter, then the cost here is in hardware and it's in money, in transistors, right? You, you will have, you will need to have more comparators. Okay. So there is an extra cost. Yes. Either time or money. Okay. The highest frequency 
the the clock uh, the clock that uh, the the convergent speed clock, okay, the, the the highest frequency, the converging clock that runs the A to D, it has a clock. The maximum is two megahertz. Okay, yani, 0.5 microseconds time period. But since this is the clock that powers up the microcontroller, the A to D, but the sample and hold and successive approximation takes time, right? It's not a single step, okay? So a sample may take six to seven microseconds to complete. The A to D reads the value, does successive approximation, saves the value in a register. The, the value saved in the register is either right justified or left justified, signed or unsigned. We're gonna talk about that soon when we start dealing with numbers. This is how it looks. Let me explain this last thing. And maybe next time we'll look at the registers. And when I explain this, next time we start with the registers and write code, okay? So this is how the analog to digital converter works. This is one A to D. Huh? This is method an A to D zero. We have another one, okay? That is not shown here. We have another one that is not shown here. You have eight channels. These are the eight channels that are analog zero to analog seven, shared with port AD zero to port AD seven. We have a multiplexer here that can select any voltage on one of the pins. So the multiplexer is not gonna be able to be connected to two of these channels at the same po point of time, okay? But the switching speed here, we can control it and read values in terms of milliseconds, which is very, very, uh, which uh, suits most of our applications. Then a buffer, okay? if we want some delay, then the sample and hold circuit. Sample, take a sample, hold it, and you save it in, the, in this capacitor, okay? Leave it for a value, for, for a certain point of time, and have the comparator take it to the sub successive approximation logic that we explained a while ago, convert the value in the SAR register we just pointed to, okay? Then, when you're done with the eight bits or 10 bits, regardless, you save the value in a corresponding register, A to D zero, A to D one, each one corresponds to a pin. A to D zero corresponds to a analog zero. pin zero, A to D one corresponds to analog pin one and so on, okay? There are more details here about, does it really A and zero always store in A to D zero? A and six always store in ATD six? No, answer is no. Depends on something called FIFO or non-FIFO mode. I'll, I'll explain that later, but we have eight data registers for the eight readings of the eight channels. So any voltage value connected to any of these pins will be converted into a number that will be stored in a data register. We call it a result register after applying the successive approximation logic, okay? Remember here, we have a sample and hold circuit. What is the sample and hold circuit? This is the circuit that does this. You sample, you hold the value until you get another sample, okay? Play. How long should I hold a value in a resistor? How long should I sample? Well, the, this circuitry here can be modeled as a resistor, right? It has an equivalent resistor. And this capacitor... RC, quantum. You have an RC circuit here. So the voltage here, the longer, the longer you close, th this takes time to charge, right? The voltage over here. And this is time. Right? How long should I sample, keep this closed? depends on how accurate you want to go. Usually people go something, uh, yani, you don't have to go to 
something in the 90% gets you very close to your final value, okay? So you can sample, you don't have to wait for the voltage here to get to the maximum. But this is again, something you can control, how, how, how long you wanna sample. Then when you disconnect, you want to hold the value. For how long do you wanna keep it in this resistor, in this capacitor, okay? Longer will give the will give the successive approximation logic more time to do more accurate convergence and get more accurate data, but it is on the expense of time. Okay, this is something we're going to talk next time about. But not to forget that these pins, the analog pins are also shared with a digital pins that you can use as digital in the digital format. And I explained that once when I pointed to uh, switch one and switch two in the old board, if you want to configure these bits uh, as, as, as digital, go back to the, the lecture when I talked about uh, parallel ports, I, I addressed them over there. Okay, you can, there, there is a register called A to D uh, 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 input enable register. Okay, if you enable it, by default, these pins are analog, but you can convert them into digital and then you will have a, your digital value read in a port AD register, digital value. It will start behaving as just as port B or port H or whatever, but in the input mode. You cannot config, configure the, these digital pins output, only input. This is how this works. All clocked by an A to D clock that is a scalar, a prescalar of the bus clock. The bus clock here can come from the oscillator directly or from the PLL, okay? If you use PLL, this is your result net bus clock, prescaled, into a A to D that can range from 500 kilohertz to two megahertz. This is, these details we'll talk about them next time. So we start, let's stop here. Next time we'll talk about the register, the pins and how to configure everything, the timing. And we write, we're gonna write some code together to read two analog voltages, maybe a voltage coming from a voltage divided from a potentiometer and a light sensor or a temperature sensor maybe. Uh, so we'll do this in, on Wednesday, inshallah. So I'm done before 10, 6.30. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you may stay until I uh, stop, uh, until I after the stop the recording. Uh, and for those who are leaving, uh, see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Yep.